why is it that when talking about financial markets and financial market analysis that we often hear about fractals and fractal this, fractal that, we're going to do fractals for our analysis. Well, to me, a lot of this sounds a bit like snake oil. It's, uh, it's a little bit like the way chaos was another term that people would throw throw around. I'm going to trade chaos. But often there's very little understanding of what these terms even actually mean in terms of the scientific literature out there. And I think that if you apply proper scientific methods, you definitely can use fractals to help you understand financial market data, stock trading data, and it's a very useful and powerful concept. So what I'm going to try and do with this video is introduce you to ideas about fractals and why they are useful for this sort of analysis and what that means in terms of developing trading strategies. So with that, welcome to the Fractal Manhattan. Now first off, what even is a fractal? I think it's very important to discuss this basic concept. What What is a fractal? It's not just a cool sounding word or something you hear in a science fiction movie. Fractals are real and relevant things. They're important in science, they're important in mathematics. And in essence, a fractal is a self-similar pattern. So you see repetitions of the pattern within itself. It's at smaller and smaller scales as, as you look get a magnifying glass and look closer and closer and closer at that pattern you see the pattern repeated within itself and if you want to learn a bit more about fractals a, a good place to start is as always Wikipedia um, a great resource of course and this tells you a lot of information most of it isn't really going to be that necessary or useful for understanding financial markets what we're going to be focusing on here is just some some very key points but it's nonetheless it's interesting to, to know a bit more about these things so let's dive in a little more closely so thinking about a fractal is a self-similar pattern or a self-replicating pattern you can imagine that we have this pattern up the top here which is a very very un odd looking shape and fractals can look like all kinds of different things but but this is a very good and and famous fractal called the Mandelbrot set. Um, Mandelbrot of course was the guy who made or popularized fractals and he was also the first or at least one of the first people to really point out the connection between fractals and financial markets. Now to see this property of self-similarity, what we need to do is zoom in on a pattern like this. And that's exactly what this series of pictures does. If you imagine we're going to zoom in on this little rectangle on this pattern here, this is what we would see. We would see more detail as we zoom in. And we can zoom in even further in on that. And this is what we see. Zoom in further still and we see this. So a key principle of, with fractals is that the more you zoom in, the more you see, the more detail there is. And to a certain degree, when you look at these pattern, it's, patterns, it's very hard to tell what scale you're looking at. Were you looking at the, the zoomed out picture or the zoomed in picture? There's a lot of similarities between them. If you look at this one here, which is part of that fractal blown up 2,000 times, you see that, well, wait a second, some of these things look very similar. So if we if we go back one slide to what we were seeing at the start. So we're seeing more and more detail and a lot of repetition of the sort of patterns that we, we see. Now, of course, when you think about financial markets, it's not hard to see that the same is very true in that case. If you looked at a chart say that plotted market data with a resolution of one week okay it's going to paint a certain picture and you'll recognize that as your familiar stock market chart but if you used instead data that was based on one day intervals 
and looked at that you would see a very similar looking chart and if you didn't put the scales on those charts you wouldn't know what the scale actually was. So leaving aside some of these prettier mathematical fractals let's move on to something that looks a lot more like the sort of data that you're used to seeing when you look at the stocks you've bought and you want to follow the prices of the stocks you've bought. So you might look at, at a pattern like this and you see these four different charts here. Well this this could be, what could it be? It could be any sort of financial data really, couldn't it? Uh, I, I should say though that this actually isn't real financial data, this is simulated financial data and if you want to simulate financial data real um, accurately and realistically you need to, to put some care and thought into how you do that because it needs to have these sorts of fractal patterns and I hope in this series of videos that I'll be able to demonstrate to you why that is important. But let's just say for the sake of argument I showed you these charts and I was your stockbroker or whoever it is that I am and I said well this this chart here is uh, that's Apple Corporation and this is the, the US dollar and this chart here is interest rates or whatever it is and you might look at these charts and say yeah alright that, that looks some, like something recognizable to me I know that is financial market data and it would be completely reasonable to think that but and I don't know if you've you've noticed you've noticed what the um, what the trick in this little presentation is but uh, I'll, I'll start by giving you a clue so I talked about scales and if you didn't have the same scale on something you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between them that is to say you couldn't tell the difference between data that was plotted on the basis of weekly data or daily data hourly data, data collected by a second, it all would kind of look the same. And you can see here none of these charts have a scale on them. But the punchline here of course is that these charts, yes they may look like they're different but they are actually all the same chart. So if you look closely you'll see that this chart here this section of data here is actually this section of data here just replotted with a slightly different scale and this chart here is simply this portion of this chart once again rescaled and lastly of course this last chart is simply the first half of this chart pretty cool isn't it? But this is actually a, a very powerful insight this idea that the financial market data, stock market data, uh, currency market data they all have this scaling property and that has really big implications for the types of methods you might use in your trading strategies and I think personally feel that this provides some proof that some methods actually do make sense and other methods are complete nonsense. So I hope I've convinced you of something today and I hope you will tune in and see more of these videos and I'm really looking forward to putting some more of these ideas out there for you guys.